Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Commander Landed here with another video on DC Legends. And today we're going to be taking a look at Cyborg, the Man Machine. He is a character that a lot of us have been able to take to Legendary, thanks in part to that great offer that we got over the 12 days of Christmas, which was amazing. And let's go ahead and talk about him. He is an energy character. As you can see, he's a very high DPS or damage per second. He hits extremely hard in, in, when he gets going. Now looking at his bio very shortly, Victor Stone was saved from the brink of death by his scientist father. Now Cyborg is a half-human, half-machine fusion of two worlds. His affiliations are the Titans. Power's adaptable man-machine delivers devastating attacks when given time to upgrade himself, which is very descriptive of the way he operates in-game. Now taking a brief look at his stats, we can see that Strength is his highest, which makes sense since he's a damage dealer. It sits at 1080. His second highest is Intelligence, with help, uh, which helps with his leadership and passive to apply strength up. And it also gives him some resistance to special damage, but he does take quite a bit of damage from special attacks. Next, he has an average stamina at 933. Now, he's a rank 3 legendary character at level 58. So, at 933, kind of on the, on the average side of stamina. And his hit points are at 9,320. Seven, which comparing him to my Batman Cape Crusader, who is a level 50 character and not legendary, and he has 10,000 hit points, that makes this a little bit on the low side, from from in my opinion. His speed is 76, which means that he's not a slow character, and he's not fast either. He's about average for speed, and his speed up buffs help him even more when he gets going. Now let's go ahead and take a look at. His design, as you can see, this is his legendary mode, obviously, as I mentioned before. I think he looks amazing, guys. And not only does he look amazing, but he's amazing in combat. I like that flame, that energy that keeps it's coming out of his cannon. It looks very, very cool. Let's go ahead and take a look at his abilities. And first of all, we have Triangulating Blast. This ability gives you three strength up and 100% hit chance at max level. This is his bread and butter. It hits very hard for a basic attack, which is good, and it, it's a preparation for his big attack. Now, when you take this ability to Legendary, as I already have, you get 5 critical up um, stacks, which makes his second attack hurt even more, and it makes this attack also hurt even more. Like I said, this is a basic attack that hits very, very hard. So let's go ahead and go into his second ability, because the first and second are very, very closely connected. This is Charge Cannon. This is his big finishing move. It has a 30% chance to hit, but if you use it after Triangulating Blast, it will hit for sure and kill whatever it hits, even if they are shielded. This is a ridiculously high damage ability. I love this ability. Like I said, anything that it hits is going to be dead by one hit. No question about it if you get him going. Now, when you take this ability to Legendary, you get a plus 100% critical damage. This is definitely overkill, guys. In my opinion, this is the last upgrade you should get simply because this ability will kill whatever it hits. So the, having that plus 100 critical damage, again, it's just like overkill on top of the overkill already. But it's not a bad legendary upgrade by any means, just overkill. Moving on to his third ability, it's Overclock, and this is his buff move. And at max level, this ability gives you four speed ups and a 50% chance to gain four strength of stacks which is a great buff ability that ramps up his damage incredibly and it gets even better and that is because his legendary upgrade gains 50% turn meter. This is an awesome upgrade since it makes Cyborg deadlier faster. He will act very very fast soon after using overclock which is really really good. Now his fourth and first passive ability, Team Sport. This at max level gives you a 26% chance to gain strength up if Cyborg is buffed. Now, this is a very good passive because even though the percentage seems low, it triggers quite frequently because Cyborg not buffs himself with pretty much every move except his second ability. He's always buffing himself. And if you have a team that revolves around buff, uh, buffing your entire team, then this ability is going to have e even more of a chance to, to trigger. Now, it triggers per attempt to buff. So it's not like during the duration of the fight, but every time you try to buff, you have a 26% chance to get that, gain that extra stack of strength up. I'm sorry, I can't talk this morning. Now, his, its legendary upgrade gives you an extra stack 
of Strength Up, which is not bad at all. Again, he needs all the damage he can get. Well, not really needs, but it does. Hit, he does hit really, really hard. And again, Strength Up are not a bad thing ever. Now, his leadership ability, Optimize Systems. This ability at max level gives 12% meter if buffed. Once again, if you have a team that revolves around buffing the whole team, it might not seem like a lot, but when this triggers, it is extremely helpful. Paired with people like Huntress, it makes the team deadlier faster. So, deadlier faster. So, it's just an amazing ability when it triggers. Now, the legendary upgrade is what takes his ability to great length, to a great level, in my opinion. Because it gives you a plus 20% chance to gain turn meter, which brings up the total chance to a 50%. Very good for a team that buffs constantly, like the team that I'm running right now in PvP that you're going to be looking at shortly. Now, let's talk about some of the pros for Cyborg. Cyborg, first of all, is an easily obtainable char uh, character, thanks to the high drop rates in arena packs for him. If you've been playing Arena, even if you're not going for the feature character, which is fine, you still get those battle essences that are great for you to buy those big Arena packs, and he drops quite frequently there. And also, he is found in four nodes in the game. So he's very easy to obtain, very easy to upgrade at the moment. Hopefully, that will not change. He's also a heavy hitter that becomes fast as you rank him up. Um, as you take him into Legendary, like I have him right now, Legendary rank 3. He's very fast. He, he acts very fast. He's about the sec usually the second to third person to act in a match. And once you get that overclock going, he's going to be taking turns like crazy. He has great synergy with a lot of heroes, especially those that do self-buffing or that buff the entire team. And he doesn't need to be the leader of the team to be good, which is a good thing. Now let's talk about some of the cons that he has. Now until you get him to Legendary, his setup is pretty long and pretty slow, which is definitely a con that this character has. He is a high investment character, and with willpower being as scarce as, as it is now, some people may find themselves abandoning him early on for some characters that may seem more powerful at lower ranks, and there are quite a few characters that at lower ranks seem more powerful than Cyborg. He's not a standalone character, he will not be the one that will win you the battle if he's the last one standing and debuffers really hurt his usefulness. Now, all the hard work that you put into accumulating those, those, those buffs so that you can fire his charge cannon, if somebody takes them away, you're gonna have to start all over again. Now, let's talk about some synergies that he has. Now, he has a synergy with a character that I mentioned pretty much in every video, and that's Star Sapphire. Um, his constant buffing plays well with her passive, meaning that he's gonna get a, a chance to get manned every time he is just putting on buffs on himself, which is just icing on the cake, giving him more survivability as he is able to heal every turn. Another one is Green Lantern Hal Jordan. I know I mentioned him pretty much in every spotlight, but shields are never a bad thing, and it just gives Cyborg even more sustain. Dr. Fate is also a great uh, synergy for him. It provides shields up, uh, shields, I'm sorry, and intelligence up for him, which makes Cyborg more resilient to both physical and special damage, which is great. Batman, world's greatest detective. His detective work gives affinity ups, and when you take that to legendary, it gives you a minus one cooldown on everybody's abilities and benefits from Cyborg's leadership as well, meaning that's going to be triggering Cyborg's passive and his leadership passive also, giving him a chance to gain, gain strength up and also turn meter. And any other character that buffs the entire team or buffs any team member, really, it works really, really well with him. Some counters for him are Zatanna. She strips away his buffs, uh, resetting all the hard work that you've done to ramp up his damage. Plus, she has special damage, to which Cyber is susceptible to, which I have found out in the last few days alone, when he's almost been one-shotted by, a, by a ha um, Hat Trick, or Trick Hat. Next. We have Assault War Suit Lex Luthor. His rockets also strip away buffs, so you can just kiss your setup goodbye. Survi Survival Suit Lex Luthor also strip away buffs. He takes away turn meter, so he's also a great counter for Cyborg. Doctor of uh, Fate is also a counter for him, because as friends go, they can also be frightful adversaries. Fate deals, a sp de deals special damage, which hurts Cyborg a lot, plus he has affinity advantage over Cyborg. And really, any special damage character or debuffing character will hurt Cyborg's utility in your team, and so that's something to watch out for. 
Anyway guys, this is the Cyborg Spotlight video, and what do you think about Cyborg? Do you like Cyborg? Is he a character that is in your roster right now? Are you working on him at the moment? Did you get him to Legendary, and if so, which rank? Let me know in the comment section below, let's talk about him, or you can tweet me at Commander Lendat on Twitter. And uh, as always guys, if you like this video and you found it enjoyable, please feel free to give it a thumbs up as that helps out the channel a great deal. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing so that you don't miss out on all the great content that we're going to be bringing you in the days ahead. And also don't forget to enable notifications so that you get a notification anytime that a new video goes up. And as always guys, I hope that you enjoy the rest of this fantastic day. See you later.